Hello and welcome. So today I'm going to be walking you through an implementation of the one-time pad protocol in Python. <clears throat> the source repository for this, if you want to pull any of the source code, is available at github.com slash descent098 slash simple dash OTP. And on this source repository, there is an implementation in a number of different languages. If you don't know Python, there's an implementation in Java, JavaScript, Go, Rust, and of course, Python. Now, if you go to this repository, you'll see that the readme here that gets displayed has a bunch of information, including a glossary that will run you through any of the terms that I'm using. Uh, it will also run you through the functions. It'll also tell you about the theory of how the one-time pad actually works in explicit detail, including providing you with an ASCII table. So be sure to read that if you don't know the protocol beforehand. And for right now, what I'm gonna do is you can go through, if you've never used GitHub before, you can either git clone if you're familiar with GitHub, or if you're not, you can come here and you can hit download zip. That will download a zip file, which can then be opened with a program like 7-zip or um, WinRAR. And from there, basically there'll be this folder and inside this folder is all of the code for all the different versions. Uh, each language will have imp uh, instructions for anything that you'll need to do to get set up to use the file. So inside the Python version, for example, this will tell you just how to set up Python and then you just straight up run the file and that's all you need to do for the Python version. So I've gone ahead and downloaded it and I've opened up the Python file inside uh, Visual Studio Code. And so we're just gonna go through and walk through the code just to give you a better idea of how this implementation works. So right off the bat, I'm using two different libraries. I'm using the secrets library and the string library. The secrets library is effectively the same as the random library. The only difference is that it's much, it's been developed specifically for cryptography. So it's much more uh, reliable in terms of being much more random at the cost of being a little bit slower. Uh, what I've done here is I've imported a function called choice, which basically what it does is it takes in any collection, so like a list or a tuple or anything like that, and it makes a uniformly random choice from that specific collection that you passed in. So if you pass this a list of five characters, it will reliably give you five, it'll give you a choice, one choice out of each of those characters, reliably random, basically. Uh, next, we're using the string module. We're using a, a variable called printable. And all of this is, is this is just a list of the printable ASCII values. Um, and the reason that I'm doing this is for the cipher, t for the, sorry, for the plain text and for the pad, I wanted them to be human readable. Uh, the cipher text, it was unavoidable basically because of how the operations work. Some, some characters won't show up. They just won't be printable. Uh, there's nothing I can do about that, but the other two I have ensured that they could be. This does also lower the security of this uh, quite substantially because I'm limited in the amount of characters that you can choose from. Um, but I made this decision just so that you can go ahead and read each if you are interested. Um, and the ciphertext, there was nothing that I could really do about that. So basically there's a whole bunch of these different functions here, uh, but at the very bottom here is where the actual script will run, the run from. If you've never seen this before, what this line here does in Python is it just says, run this code if this is the, this is the file being run. Um, because you could also import these functions into different files. So basically all of this, this line here says is, if this is the file that's being run, run this code. So first what we do is we set up a text variable, which is a multi-line string. That's just what's going to be our plain text. This would be the text that you want to actually encrypt. And from there, we generate a pad that's the same length as the text using the generate pad function. So this basically just checks how long this text is and passes it into the generate pad function, which if we come back up to the top here, all of this does is it takes in that length value as an int and it just goes through and loops and it continuously chooses new random printable characters to add to the pad. And then basically once it has the pad, it saves it and then returns the value so that it can be put into a variable to be used for later. Uh, now this save function, all the save function does is takes in some string, takes in a path and saves it. So for all of these functions, I've set it so that it will automatically write a file in the directory for each thing that's being generated. So in this case, because we're generating the pad, it passes the text of the pad and then just saves it in the same directory using pad.txt. So after that, we basically take the result of generating that pad, put it into the pad variable, and then print it out to the terminal. 
Next, we go ahead and generate a ciphertext using the pad and the plain text. And so basically, so this encrypt function is just further up here. This takes in the plain text and the pad, and it returns the ciphertext. So the way that it does this is it does a simultaneous iteration. And so if you've never seen this before, basically what this does, I'll just quickly pull up a command line. So basically, let's say you have a list. So it's a shopping list, and we say eggs, ham, and sausage, for example. And then we have a list called priority. Priority. And this has, you know, three, one, and two. What you can do is you can say for item priority, priority which is not going to work because it's the same name. We'll just say current priority in zip of shopping list and priority. What this will basically do is it will simultaneously do a normal Python for loop, but it will make, it will go through both lists at the same time. So we can say print, and then we can say current priority, comma, uh, item and so this will go through it'll simultaneously go through both lists at the same time It will print whatever the priority is at the current index of each and then it will print whatever the shopping list item is So if we go through first, I have to make sure to actually spell item, right? You'll see we get three and eggs. So that's the corresponding to the first index one and ham which corresponds to the second index and two and sausage which corresponds to the third index and so that's all that zip does here and so basically we're just going through each character of the original plain text and the pad at the same time uh there's just a check here to make sure that the value is actually printable because again i wanted the plain text and the uh, pad to both be printable values so it just errors out if they aren't uh, and then what it does is it generates this xord value um, variable, which is basically using this ORD function, which essentially just takes a character and converts it to an integer. So for example, we could, this would be the equivalency of what the ASCII uh, conversion would be. So let's say we say ORD of A, this will give us 97, uh, and then we can use its corollary function char of 97 to get the same value back. This is the exact same idea that would typically be implemented using an ASCII table. It's just in Python, this is called char and ord, respectively. So basically we take the character value, it's called the ordinance in Python, uh, and XOR it from both the plain text and the pad. And then once we have that XOR value, we then convert that integer back into a actual letter and store that in the ciphertext. And so that's just what we're doing here. We're just appending that ciphertext character after we've generated it right here. We then save that file and then return the ciphertext, which down here gives us our ciphertext. <clears throat> From there, we print that out as well. And then we move on to decrypting. So decrypting, we pass in the pad and the ciphertext and the decrypt function is basically the exact same as the encrypt function. Uh, it just basically goes through for each of the pad characters uh, does the XOR value and then appends the XOR value as a character back to the plain text and then saves it. And that's basically it. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to quickly open up a command line in that same folder and I'll just show you what actually happens when you run it. So if you type python otp.py or if you're on Linux or Mac, it would be python3 otp.py. Go ahead and run it and you'll see uh, that basically for our pad, these are all printable characters, which is why we actually see them print out. Uh, the ciphertext, not all of these are printable, which is why it looks so broken here. Uh, and then this is the decrypted text, which, because this did work, is the exact same as our original plain text that we had. And then in our folder, we have three files. We have the pad, the ciphertext, which again, it will say that it, it will think that it's a binary file because some of the characters aren't printable. And then you have the plain text, which is the original text that we fed into it. So that's how this implementation works. If you want more details about how the theory of this, of the one-time pad works, then be sure to read the source, uh, the readme file in the source repo, which is available again at github.com slash descent098 slash simple dash OTP. And in the readme here, you can actually just go ahead and click on the theory tab. And this will basically give you 
an in-depth, detailed explanation of how, how the one-time pad protocol works. All right, thanks for watching.